Before we get started today, I wanted to talk to you about two things. The first one is, before I started this podcast, it was a blog. Now, back in May 2017, I started my comic blog that you see every day that I post on the site. Just recently, the first four months have been released as a paperback book. You can read about it from day one, May 1st, the day that we found out that my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. The book is a collection of those daily posts from May through August of 2017. So if you're interested, go to AmericanBandito.com slash book. That's AmericanBandito.com slash book. It's also available on Amazon and in the Comixology app. And also, I wanted to tell you about Sticker Mule. Now, Sticker Mule is a place where you can upload your artwork and get stickers and buttons and more printed with your logo on it. It's where I get my American Bandito stickers made. But right now, if you go to AmericanBandito.com slash Sticker Mule, click on the link, sign up for Sticker Mule, and you get $10 towards your first order. So go to AmericanBandito.com slash Sticker Mule and get $10 towards the stickers of your own logo or whatever you have. Shipping is also free, AmericanBandito.com slash Sticker Mule. Now here's the show. I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. If you do create your own things, it's really easy to let it take up all of your free time. And of course you think to yourself, that's what you want to do. But we all know you don't want to do it at the expense of enjoying life or family and friends. There has to be a way, there has to be a balance. But when you're in charge of yourself, how do you manage that? So my question this week is, how do you make time for your personal life? Since the people I'm talking to this season actually have a place to run, I would think that it's an even harder task for them. So let's find out how they do it. Mia at Stone Fence, it's an easy answer. She makes the time because of her family. I do a decent job of that. I kind of vowed while my kid was still young that I would be home when I needed to. Mm -hmm. So on the other end, my payroll is probably a little higher than it should be, but um, I think it's important. So I do a pretty good job of that. Laura and her sister take trips, but they end up thinking about work as they see things around them. My sister's husband will attest that both of us are really bad at separating things out. When we go to another city, we go look at their paper stores and we try to find like the indie craft shows. Well, that's or, just you know, fun like, to do we, anyway. It's just like, but we're like, this is work. It's hard because there's like, it's so much a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. Like this store is me. To, to say, how do you separate yourself from it? That's hard. But I do find when we first opened the store, I had this idea that I would come in and I would like stand at the cash register and I would work on art projects. And I brought so many art projects into the store. Second, third year, I was like, that's not gonna happen. There's like certain kinds of art that you can do here. There's certain like production stuff that I can do. And then there's other stuff that just requires a certain level of concentration that you just absolutely can't do in this retail setting yeah. because your concentration has to be on your customers. You know, even when there's no one in the store, there's the potential for a customer. And so you can't ever like separate yourself out and say, now is my time to really think about where I'm going to paint next on this piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So like that kind of creating for me has moved back home. So I do have like at night things that I'm working on. Sometimes it's specific for the store. Other times it's like a little bit of playing and in the back half of my head I'm like how am I going to make this into a product to sell at the store? But you know I also have to just say well this is just what it's going to be and sometimes it's a year later and I look at something and I'm like oh that's going to turn into this. Sometimes I'm just creating because I think for, for both my sister and I, from childhood, creating has always been something that we do. That was always something that our parents provided space for, and you talk to people who are runners, and they would die if they couldn't run every day, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, that's how, I, that's how we are about creating. So it's not really a question of, can you separate yourself from that? It's that 
by having this store, we've been able to bring it more into our life than we would have in another sort of work setting. How do you catalog all the ideas that you get for stuff you're going to make in here? It's really hard. We have we have no books. Okay. My sister right. is a, she's a drawer, so she is like constantly drawing designs for cards and prints here, and okay. so she always has a notebook that she's carrying with her and sketching stuff out. You know, so especially when we travel, she'll look at. Oh, we just we went to Portland this summer, and she was like, "Oh, like we want that postcard, but we want a Madison version. How do we take that, make a Wisconsin version?" And mm-hmm. so it's like constantly trying to come up with ideas. So. Yeah. I actually, I had a funny manager who, she said to me once that she believes that God gives you ideas, Mm -hmm. and if you don't use them fast enough or well enough, God takes them away from you. That just seems mean. (laughs) I know. (laughs) And it terrified me at the time because I had so many ideas, and so I was like, I just need to write everything down, (laughs) and then God can't take them away from me. So far, I still have the notebooks. Tammy from Bohemian Bobble tells me that it's the other way. She actually needs help staying focused on work. I'm kind of good at that. Are you? Okay. (laughs) You're pretty good at it. (laughs) Um, Sometimes too good. Sometimes it's hard for me to stay motivated, especially Mm. like in October. Every October I say, I'm going to take October. And even though I don't have any shows, I'm going to crank, crank, crank and build up my inventory and it'll be smooth sailing through the holidays. Mm -hmm. And every year I don't do that. I'm just kind of lazy. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like Netflix binge watching. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I really need a show to get me motivated. Mm. So like my show season will start this weekend and I'm like, I think I better make some stuff this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, although I still have a pretty good inventory from, from over the summer. But family time is harder though because shows are on the weekend. So mm. that is a little bit more difficult. And the just, kids are getting to the age where they don't want to go to them? Or? Well, my daughter, I, I almost kind of force her to come with me. You, you have to. <laughs> and like I do the farmer's market on the square. So mm. I'll be like, Jem, come on, let's go. And she'll like nap under the table during the day. Or It's okay. early. Yeah, uh-huh. it is early. But I can usually convince her with food and smoothies and things like, like Ian's pizza. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. My son never wants to go, but he'll help sometimes. Yeah. So you have a harder time separating the work into your family life. Yeah. Huh. That's pretty impressive. (laughs) Look at you being all conscious of your family. (laughs) Leah and Rebecca at Booth 121 are family, so they spend lots of time together at work and outside of it. Well, we don't always, (laughs) especially since we're family. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, when you show up for a family thing, you can't go, hey. But my husband's very involved in this, and he builds stuff for us, and so he's interested in it. It's just more of a conversation area. Rebecca and I see each other enough so that we can handle business at work. We don't have to take it outside of work. If I have a question, I can text her when I need it. Yeah. But we've been on family vacations together. We have family dinner almost every Sunday. We never talk about work then, Mm -hmm. so I don't know. But it's it's a snippet, and that's more of Mm -hmm. One of us was there and the other one wasn't and something major happened. Yeah. And that lasts for five minutes yeah. and then we're done. But, you know, as, as you know, you have kids. And so sometimes when you get home, you don't have any options. Yeah. It's no longer about work. It yeah. has to be about kids. Yeah. So they really keep us focused on yeah. making our home time about being at home. And I didn't realize coming into this just how close-knit this whole oh, operation yeah, yeah, was yeah, yeah, until yeah. you guys told me. Oh, because and there's her sister, other sister-in-law. Well, so what's that? She th- always thought that something that we were missing in the store is more clothing. So she... Rebecca and I have no fashion sense, no. basically. So <laughs> we cannot be trusted with no, that. No. So it's, it's, she's kind and of... And she's told us that numerous times. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was a ploy to get us to dress better or... So she started... She is now into the buying of, of clothing and she's got a um, couple of clothing lines here That's that she buys for yeah. sale. Yeah. Okay. So she's now she's involved in the business as well. But again, I don't think when we have, when we get together outside of here, cause we, we do it often. Yeah. So, it, and I guess maybe that's the other part. Technology makes it so easy that if I have a question, I can just mm-hmm. ask it and I'm going to get an answer, whether it's in five minutes or four hours, but it's still going to get it. So when we actually do see each other by that point, mm-hmm. things are pretty much taken care of. Anastasia of Confectionique takes trips with her husband to stock up the shop, but she still needs to be reminded to leave it once in a while. I exercise every day. I hang out with my husband. I have four grandkids. Yep, travel is a big part of what we do. I spend time drumming. I spend time in my studio. Sometimes my daughter will call. She'll say, where are you? And I'll say, oh, I'm at the shop putting final touches on. I 
I said, I should be done today. And she says, mother, you're never done. And it's true. Yeah. It's true. I could stay here. I, I've got to limit myself, but I could stay here forever. Oh, I should move this or hang this or what, what other idea comes to mind. But I have to tell myself I have to be done and leave. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a deal with the lady at, at the desk. She'll come knock on my door and she'll let me know when she's leaving for the night. And then that's my clue. <laughs> I need to leave for the night. You have to have somebody tell you to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about right. That's about it. Oh, oh my goodness. That's nice. <laughs> Tammy at Hatch Art House says she needs to learn to separate things when she does get a day off. She was able to hire some employees to help her deal with that recently. I think that's the eternal question for an artist or somebody that owns a small business is how to find balance in their life and ongoing struggle for sure. But I I try to take off one day a week and it's hard though because I almost always work from home when I... Like tomorrow is supposed Monday is supposed to be my day off, but I know I have so much to do, so I'll be doing a lot of admin. But I do I just I'll just go for a bike ride or do something just where I don't have to think about work. But right now, honestly, there is no set time or anything, and I I do yoga. Okay. <laughs> I do yoga I mean, and I ride my some bike. Things. Yeah, it's yeah. it's nothing that's making you go, oh, what did I get myself into? No, I mean I think I I can imagine it be like having a second child. You think it's going to be a breeze because you already have one and that one is doing great. But, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but once you, once it happens, you're like, wait, this is a lot more work than, than I thought it would be. But it's also very fulfilling and I really enjoy it. So Mm -hmm. you, I may be working a lot, but I also, it's nothing that I don't go home and cry at night. You know, I, I, I mean, there's a lot of times where I have to keep myself away just because I know I need to have a day off from the shop. But um, I do have some great employees, so I don't. I know I don't have to be here all the time physically. It is. It's just balance is just one of those questions. It's so hard. I don't know when it's ever going to happen for me. And maybe I've actually achieved balance, and I just haven't realized it. You know, maybe I don't need to have like a regular schedule. I actually, now that made me think, when did you decide to take on employees? When Hazel started. Before that, I I did have some artists that would help me out in Hatch. So they would just come in and basically volunteer their time for a couple hours. Hmm. And then that gave me some time to run errands, like go to the bank or do whatever I needed to do. But I also had shorter hours. We weren't open on Mondays. And uh, yeah, so I extended things a little bit once both shops came into place. John at Mother Fools, he does what I'm guilty of. He occupies his time by switching to one of the other projects that he works on so he doesn't burn out on one outlet. Well, as I mentioned, I I do a lot of things. Photography, music. It's really easy for me to just kind of work around the clock. And a lot of times that's fine because I like everything I'm doing. It's not like... It's not like I'm going to a factory and punching in and working on the clock. Every couple hours I'm changing activity. Oh, I've got to edit these photos. Oh, mm-hmm. I'd better run over and do the paperwork of other fools. It's like I'm actually, yeah, mainly doing things I enjoy. Not 100%, but mainly. But you don't feel like you're neglecting anybody or anything in your personal life? Sometimes. Okay. Um, yeah, there definitely have been um, relationships that I have had to just kind of forego because... Mm-hmm. Schedules didn't work out, and I'm not willing to give up a lot of the things I want to do. So, yeah, I've had that. Yeah, anything you do in this world, there's a cost and a benefit. You but know? I get the, yeah. from the whole, you're not punching a time clock going, okay, time to drill the washers. or what. I don't know why that's the example I went with right yeah. there. For some reason, I pictured engineering. Since 1-1000 is still a fairly new business, she doesn't think she makes enough time yet. I'm really struggling with that these days, and it's something that I'm working on, and it's actually something, I mean, I laugh, but it's serious, because I learned, I had an epiphany last week that I'm like, okay, I created this community and this business around things that I loved, and now they're my work, and now I don't, and and I don't participate in them, because Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm the builder behind the scenes, and so like when we do a workshop, I don't take them, because I'm hosting them. And that's really sad to me because those are all things that I love doing. I used to have friends over and we would make stuff and I used to bake things. And so I'm like, now what do I like? It's a whole new world for me. And I'm like, well, I really love building a business, but it's not healthy to not have downtime. 
So it's, I don't know, I'm in this interesting phase where it's really critical for me to be working 60 or 80 hours a week, but it's also very unhealthy because you, it's really, it's in all those downtimes whenever I actually take them, when I have like the biggest aha moments anyway, but definitely running my own business and running the studio, it's totally a work-life blend. I don't even think there's going to be like a here's my work life and here's my home life anymore. Like that's not possible. And that I'm okay with that. It's more so I need to be making time to take care of myself and take care of the people I love. That's something that when somebody doesn't predefine your day for you anymore, like when you don't have to be to work from 7 to 4.30 or whatever, you have to figure that out. And that's a little bit more challenging to figure out. I've been taking the dogs to the dog park almost okay. daily for a walk and I listen to podcasts mm-hmm. on my walk and that has been a step in the right direction. I took a workshop. Oh, you did? Yeah, I took mending last weekend. What in the world is mending? Mending, modern mending, it's mending your clothing. Oh. Yeah, they used to do that and it's back. Don't, didn't they them, call it darning? Darning like is darn a technique tar- of okay. mending. It's, gotcha. a, it's a certain stitch, yeah. I took home ec and uh, that was about the extent of my sewing and or yeah. mending knowledge. Kyle at Pieces Unimagined has a pretty solid attitude about his free time. It's his, and he's going to find ways to use it. That's the one thing that I have done pretty well. But I'm basically out of here by 4 every day. Okay. And I'll come in maybe at 8. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. And then I might do some overtime here and there, but I make sure I have fun, we get away, have a cabin up north, make sure we get to it, yeah. get to a conference last week in Florida, do it, just get away. You have to, because I, so I was a workaholic before, okay. and in the antique store I had, it was major successful, but I was like working 18 hours a day maybe, yeah. <laughs> you know, like literally. And I did that for years, and it was that was foolish. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to burn out on your own place. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Plus, you're just wasting life. Life is meant to enjoy. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the reasons a lot of people start doing things like this is because they want to enjoy it. And right, and then they usually lose themselves. And, and I will admit, sometimes it does feel like it encroaches, but at least now I'm old enough to be able to say... If the place fails, fine. (laughs) If it's going to fail, I'm going to enjoy it. (laughs) I mentioned before that, like John, I just switch up what project I do. But to explain it more, I have a few things that help me balance that. I use the Pomodoro method when I can which is I set up a 20 minute timer when I'm working on something and when it stops I take a 20 minute break usually to do something else that isn't project related like I take a walk or something. I even do this at work it helps clear my head. Sometimes I come back and have more ideas for what I was doing. Also I set appointments on my calendar each day to make sure I do something else even if it's something simple like watch a movie with my wife or go out to dinner. Otherwise I would just tell myself I'll do it later or I'll do it tomorrow. So far, it's helped me figure out how to work on several things at a time. So I just thought I'd mention it. Thanks to everyone who spoke with me on the show today, and thanks for listening. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to the show at AmericanBandito.com slash subscribe. And what you can do there is you can subscribe by email and get all kinds of updates when we're done with the season. And there's also Apple Podcasts, YouTube, TuneIn. And if you have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home device, just say, play the American Bandito podcast. Music for the show is by Romcom. You can hear more at AmericanBandito.com slash music. And next week, I'll be back with the last question this season. So until then, so long. Mm-hmm.